what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at something very special. What we have here is the brand new Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Beskar Armor Mandalorian. And the reason why this is so special, aside from the fact that it's an amazing looking figure, it's because it's a Comic-Con exclusive. An actual physical <laughs> Comic-Con exclusive that you could buy at San Diego Comic-Con 2022. And I'm just so grateful to be saying that because... A big part of me thought that we would never see another normal Comic-Con. Maybe that sounds crazy to say, but, you know, for a while there, it was looking it was looking kind of weird, you know? Uh, but man, it, like, here we are, 2022, we have actual Comic-Con exclusives. Comic-Con is around the corner, and I'm just so excited. And huge shout-out to Beast Kingdom for sending this out to me to review. You guys are always awesome. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you. But let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with the packaging. As you can see here, we get some cool-looking Mandalorian artwork i like how the helmet has like a reflective kind of look that's very fitting for the best car armor it does say star wars mandalorian legendary warrior bounty bunter i think that's the first time i've heard that that's kind of cool <laughs> down here it says the mandalorian and then some other information up here we do have the comic-con exclusive sticker and then over here we have another sticker that just says 2022 beast kingdom exclusive and then when you open this up you are able to see the figure. It's kind of hard to make out what's going on in there because of the glare, but you can see all the accessories that he comes with. And then over here, we have a shot of the figure that also shows the accessories. On the side of the box, it does say Star Wars. On the back of the box, we get a look at Mando doing his thing. And then down here, we get some information about what he comes with. And then on this side of the box, it says Star Wars once again. And that's about it for the collector-friendly packaging. It does look awesome, um, but I can't wait to open this figure up. So let's go ahead and get Mando out and take a look. All right, so here we have Mando right out of the box. And as you can see, this is an awesome looking figure. Check out the shine to the armor. That is <laughs> really nice. I love the way that looks. The soft goods are really well done. The sculpting work is good. This is a beautiful looking figure. Check that out. I went ahead and put his weapons on him just to kind of give him the full effect. And I wanted to show this off real quick. So we've got the gun on the back here. And as you can see, it, it stays on there with no problem. It doesn't fall off when you're handling the figure. Out of all the Mandalorian figures I have, Beast Kingdom handled this setup better than Figure Arts, better than Mafex, better than Black Series. Mafex and Figure Arts overcomplicated it, and it still doesn't even work. And then for Black Series, they just... It just doesn't plug in like the peg isn't long enough or the peg hole isn't deep enough It just doesn't work. It always falls out when you try to play with the figure in this case They kept it simple. It's just a little clip that holds the gun You can pull it off very easily Snap it back into place and you don't have to worry about it falling off So that is awesome But man look at this guy <laughs> He does have a cape that has a wire in it, which is really nice so you could have him posed up doing his thing with the cape flying in the wind. This is a great figure, but let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the details on him. It cracks me up because these egg attack figures are so unique and weird, you know, and they're not for everybody, but Beast Kingdom still goes all out with all the details, with the soft goods, the sculpting work. They put their all into it and they always come out nice, but yeah, it just it cracks me up that they that they do such a good job on the little details on these things when they're just so unique and bizarre, you know, they're just such weird figures. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that awesome detail. We're starting off at the head as usual. I do think this is a good looking Mando head sculpt. We have some nice details on the side. Everything looks clean and very well done. Same thing over here. That looks really good. And I like the way the visor looks too. And I like how it has that deep black color. It's a nice contrast to the shiny gunmetal of the rest of the helmet. So that's awesome. Unfortunately, mine does have a little scuff right there. It might be hard to see because of the glare. But yeah, there's a little scuff. So I might have to pick up another one while I'm at uh, Comic-Con. But yeah, this helmet looks amazing. Aside from that one little imperfection. I think they did a good job with it. And then moving down into the body... I just love the way this armor looks. It's so like clean and reflective. Look, you could see me right there. It's almost like a mirror. <laughs> it looks so good. That's awesome. They did a great job with this armor. And check out the shoulder pad. That looks really nice. The forearm. He's got his little weapon right in there. And this does rotate around. If, if you have it on the wrong way, you could just kind of move it. So that's good. The hand looks good. You could see that they put a little bit of a wash between the fingers to make it look a little bit more kind of grimy and that's another nice contrast with the shininess of the armor yeah this all looks really really nice on this side we have the mudhorn insignia 
that looks good. And again, we've got that really nice shiny armor. Down here on the forearm, we have like another weapon. Oh, I forget the name of his weapons on his forearm, but I know he has all kinds of gadgets and stuff, so that's cool. I like how it's actually sculpted on there, and you can see it. The hands, once again, have a little bit of a wash. That looks great. And then right here, we do have the strap. This strap is cool. I do kind of wish that it was like leather. But as it is right now, it's plastic, but there is a lot of nice texture and sculpting work on there, so it looks good. We've got some ammunition there, some pouches up here. And then on the back, we do have the clip for the gun that does rotate, so that's nice. And then looking at the belt here, they did a good job. With all the sculpting on this, we have some pouches, some, I don't know what those are, some kind of gadgets as well. Some more ammunition, some little compartments, all kinds of good stuff. So the belt is very well done. Uh, that looks nice. And then over here we do have his gun holster. And the gun goes right in there with no problems. It's very simple, not complicated. You don't have to take anything apart to get the gun in there. just goes right in. It looks nice. And then uh, right here we do have some armor pads on his legs. And these just kind of sit on top of the cloth. But... They're pretty sturdy. It doesn't feel like they're going to come off or anything. You do have his knee pads. With the little blaster thing on the side. The legs look good. Some more ammunition. So yeah, a lot of great sculpting work. And the soft goods are very well done too. I like the material they used right here. It's very fitting for Mando. And it looks really good. I love the material for the cape too. It looks awesome. And it does have a bendy wire so you could... You could kind of pose it up and get crazy with it. So yeah. Awesome stuff. This figure looks amazing. I love the armor. I love how shiny it is, how clean the sculpting work is, and I love how good the soft goods turned out. So, yeah, they did a great job with the look on this figure. And then for accessories, we get a bunch of cool stuff, but let's start off with the hands. We get three different sets. We have a pair of fists, we have a set of open hands, and then we have a set of weapon gripping hands. And I love that he came with all these different hands, but they are kind of hard to switch on and off from the figure. I find when I pull the hand off, the peg from the arm kind of comes with it sometimes, so you got to kind of deal with that. Not a big deal, but just something that I was experiencing. And then taking a close look at the weapon, starting off with the blaster, I think they did a great job with this. You can see that there's some nice sculpting work on there, and they put a bit of a paint wash to bring out the details. He's able to hold it with no problem at all, and it looks awesome. Look at that. Yeah, that's a dope looking gun. And then on the opposite side here, we do have the uh, dark saber. You can see the handle has some pretty nice details on it. And the blade looks good. I love that they included this. I feel like there's a couple of Mando figures that should have had this that didn't. So I'm happy that he he ended up getting it. And then he does have his rifle. And, you know, I'm sure every Star Wars weapon out there has some crazy name. But I don't know all the crazy names. So I'm just going to call this a rifle. <laughs> Forgive me. But this looks really, really good. Very well sculpted and painted. I like how it has a worn, kind of beat up look. Ooh, look at all that detail on there, man. That looks awesome. Looks like it was painted black, but then got scratched up. And it's just it's been through a couple of situations, you know. Looks really good. And then one of my favorite things about the rifle blaster is that it's able to go onto the back of the figure with no problem at all. You basically just clip it on there like that. And uh, we're good to go. You don't have to worry about it falling off or anything. And that is awesome. And then he does have the Beskar spear. And this looks really good too. It's very nice and smooth. The color matches the figure itself. It is like a two-piece kind of situation. Uh, but that's okay. I'm a little worried about this peg though. I'm afraid if, I, if this falls or something, this might break. I do wish that it was one solid piece. But, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. It does look really good. He looks good holding it. And I'm really happy that they included this. And then we do have this awesome looking jetpack. Check this thing out. Look at the details on that. That is awesome. And then I love the uh, shiny gunmetal color that matches the armor on Mando. This is awesome. But my favorite thing about this is that it's a magnet. So check it out. If you want, you could magnetize it right over the cape. Even though it's not really 100% accurate or anything. That's something you could do if you want. Or you can move the cape to the side and stick it onto the plate on the back of the figure. Bam, there you go. So that looks good. I do wish that the magnet was a little bit stronger because, you know, it kind of shifts the, the uh, his belt or whatever you want to call this thing out of the way. And then once you move, you could, if you start to move the belt, it knocks off the jetpack pretty easily. So it would be nice if the magnet was a little bit stronger. But as it is, 
This is very cool. And then for the final accessory, he does come with one of the Beast Kingdom Egg Attack stands. All their figures come with this exact same stand, obviously with different designs on them. This one does have uh, the Mandalorian. You can see him walking right there. That's awesome. And then up front, it does say Mandalorian. Right here, it does say Beast Kingdom. And these are cool. I actually display all my Egg Attack figures with these stands because they look cool because they're all the same. And they just look nice and uniform on the shelf. And they do a very good job of holding on to the figure. So that's like a very cool display piece just like that. And then now for some quick size comparisons. Here we have Mando alongside the Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Jango Fett. And the Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Infinity War Iron Spider. And although I prefer when Beast Kingdom does soft goods. Because in my opinion they do some of the best soft goods at this scale. I think they do a pretty good job with figures that don't have any soft goods at all. And Jango and Spider-Man are really good examples of that. Especially Spider-Man. This thing is ridiculous, man. Just check him out. Look at that paint job, the articulation, the light-up eyes. I love that figure. That thing is awesome. And then next up, we have Mando alongside the Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Endgame Thor and the Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Classic Comic Book Spider-Man. And I love these two figures. Definitely some of my favorite Egg Attack figures. I have reviews for both of them on my channel now, so check them out because they're awesome. And they're kind of unique in a way because both of these figures were intended exclusives for a couple of years ago, but... They became summer exclusives because there was no Comic-Con because of the whole situation. So, yeah, these guys are, are kind of unique, you know. They, they, they kind of hold a weird position where, uh, you know, they were supposed to be exclusives, but they didn't come out. But Beast Kingdom found a way to get them to people. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of they're kind of weird in a way, you know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. And then next up, we have Mando alongside the two figures that really got me into the Egg Attack stuff. And that would be the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Cyclops and Wolverine. And yeah, as soon as I bought these two figures, I really just fell in love with them and it made me want to get more of these. And for the longest time, I was mostly sticking with just Marvel stuff. That's why most of the comparisons were Marvel figures. But after Mando, I'm going to have to get some more Star Wars stuff. I like Jango Fett a lot. And at first, I thought he was going to kind of push me over the edge. But, you know, I was kind of like, all right, I like Jango. Maybe one day I'll get Boba Fett. I know I'm going to get Mando and we'll see what happens from there. But now that I have Mando... I really want to get Darth Maul, and I want the other Mando too, the one that comes with Grogu. So, yeah, I might, might have fallen down another rabbit hole here, but it's all good because these things are awesome. Next up, we have the Egg Attack Mando alongside the Mafex Mandalorian figure and the SH Figure Arts Mandalorian version 2. And then next up, we have him alongside the Star Wars Black Series Season 1 Mando that was greatly improved by a soft goods cape from Harker Customs. Shout out to Harker Customs. And then on the opposite side, we have the Black Series Quill. And then just to show them off with a couple of random things, here we have Mando alongside the NECA King Kong. And on the opposite side, just because I, for some reason, still have this thing on my Spider-Man shelf, <laughs> we have one of the Mighty Mugs uh, from Hasbro. You guys remember these things? I had a bunch of them. I thought they were kind of cool back in the day. And then, of course, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And when it comes to articulation, I think that Mando does have a pretty decent amount, but there's definitely some limitations because of the armor and the soft goods. But I will say, I am having fun playing around with it, posing him up, and just doing different things. And I feel like you can get some pretty fun poses out of him. And I do feel like Beast Kingdom did a pretty decent job of maintaining articulation on him, even though he does have all this stuff going on. You know, he's got armor, straps clothing, all kinds of stuff that would hinder articulation, but Beast Kingdom did maintain some range on some of these joints, more so than I was expecting in some cases. Uh, but yeah, I think they did a pretty good job with it, even though at the end of the day, a lot of the joints are limited. But uh, you know, you definitely gotta salute them for what they were able to do. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with the head. You are able to move his head side to side, which is nice. And then he does have some pretty good tilt, so you could give uh, Mando some attitude. You could get him to look up to about right there, which is pretty good. And, you know, I wasn't expecting that much out of the head. So, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> His head is hilarious, man. And then you could get him to look down to about right there, which is nice. So, yeah, not a whole lot, but got some good stuff going on right here at the head. And then for the torso, he does have a diaphragm cut. And I thought the torso was going to be completely useless. But you could definitely get a little bit of movement out of it. So, let's check it out. You could get him to go back to about right there, which is not too bad considering he has an armor plate back there. And then you could get him to go forward to about right there. Look at that. Again, not too bad. And it's crazy because on the front part, he does have the 
big armored plate on his chest, but then he does have a little plastic piece down here that covers his abdomen. But the plastic piece is under the chest armor, so when you crunch him forward, the chest armor just kind of slides over that plastic piece. So I think that was a pretty good way to do it. And then he does have some pretty decent side to side. That's probably the most effective part of it. You know, you could actually get him to move side to side without too many problems. So you could get some dynamic poses out of him going side to side. So that's nice. And then for the arms, we do have these awesome butterfly joints. I like these a lot. I like how they click and they're very sturdy. And yeah, these are good. But on Mando, the soft goods are pretty tight on him. So like when you have his, let's see if you have his left arm all the way forward, and then you try to move his right arm forward as well, it's going to move the left arm. You see that? <laughs> That's because the uh, soft goods are so tight. So what I'm going to do is probably try to click them both forward as far as far forward as I can and just kind of leave them like that and hopefully stretch the soft goods just a little bit so that I can move both of his arms with less issue. But even as it is right now, it's not a big deal. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you see that? See how his arm moves? That's funny. And then he does have a ball joint at the shoulder. And let's see. Can't really get it to go up all that much. Actually, let's try on this arm. I was having a little bit more luck on this arm. Yeah, so he could get his arm up a pretty decent amount for some shooting poses. There we go. That's not too bad. And then let's see. You could bring his arms up a really good amount as well, which was pretty surprising to me. And then he does have upper bicep swivel. I think he has a double jointed elbow but it's kind of hard to tell because he does have this thing on his forearm so whether or not it's double jointed it's uh, only going to go that far which you know that's okay a little bit more than 90 I could live with that and then at the wrist he does have a little ball joint one of those like double ball joint deals so it just kind of shifts around and spins on the ball joint itself so you get a little bit of movement out of that and then at the legs his little legs are funny, man. You could get him to kick forward to about right there. He can kick back to right there. You can only go to the side to about right there. And then you're kind of risking the uh, damaging the pants if you try to go further than that. But you could get him to do the, uh, the Liu Kang kick, kind of. Bicycle kick? No, not really. <laughs> then he does have upper thigh swivel. He has a double jointed knee which gets some pretty decent bend here. Let's see. Yeah, it could bend it to like right there. And then at the foot, we do have a joint that's similar to the wrist joint. So we have a swivel and then it can rock a little bit on there, go forward to right there, come up to right there. And then he does have a toe hinge. So yeah, obviously not the most articulated figure ever, but you could definitely get him into, into some cool poses, you know? And like I said, I've had fun messing around with them. And it's, it seems like the more you mess with them, the more the joints kind of like, or actually the more things just kind of shift around and the easier they are to move. Right out of the box, I felt like he couldn't move at all. But then the more I played with them, you kind of get things going a little bit. So, you know, obviously this is not something I'm going to be pulling off my shelf and just posing around all the time. But you could definitely get them into a cool pose and have them hang out on your shelf and just look like a badass, so there we go. Yeah. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this guy's awesome. I love the way he looks. I think that Beast Kingdom did a great job with the sculpting, the soft goods, and the shine on the armor. That's probably my favorite thing about this figure. I love the way that the armor shines. It looks so cool to me. <laughs> and I think it's going to look awesome on the shelf. Even alongside a bunch of other unique looking egg attack figures, this guy's going to stand out because of the way the armor looks. And I really think that it's going <laughs> to catch people's attention and just kind of draw your eye towards it. Because it just looks so unique and crazy, man. I don't know. I just love the shine. I think it looks so good. And I really like the fact that he came with pretty much all the things that you would want with Mando, except for Grogu, but there's other versions of Mando that have him, so I think I'm going to pick up one of those so that I have a 
egg attack Grogu. But as far as the weapons go, he pretty much has every weapon that you would want with Mando. So that's awesome. And then he does come with a bunch of hands, so that's always great too. As far as the articulation goes, obviously there's not a whole lot going on here. They did a pretty good job with what they were working with, but there's definitely some limitations. But, you know, I'm okay with that because I really don't go into egg attack expecting maximum articulation. If I could get them into like cool poses and have them look awesome on the shelf, then I'm happy with it, and Mando was definitely capable of doing that. So I'm satisfied enough with the articulation, but I just really love the way he looks. And, you know, he does have that one imperfection on the helmet. He's got a little scuff there, so that does kind of suck. But aside from that, I'm completely happy with this figure, and I think I'm going to have to pick up another one of these from Comic-Con this year because I want a nice and clean one. Uh, but aside from that little scuff on the head, this guy is awesome. They did a great job with everything on him. Um, like I said, he just looks amazing. That's the that's the main thing that I like about him. <laughs> He's gonna look so awesome on the shelf. So if you're interested in this figure, you could pick him up from San Diego Comic Con 2022 from Beast Kingdom. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they have on display. I'm sure they're gonna have a bunch of cool reveals. Hopefully they have some other Egg Attack stuff for sale that I could pick up. You know. Uh, but yeah, they always have a great presentation at conventions. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do this year. And once again, huge thank you to them for sending this to me to review. Um, I always do appreciate it. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I upload a video and you know every time that I go live. If you're not aware, I do go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and every Friday at 7 p.m. So come through. Let's talk about toys and get weird. Thank you very much.